She is hot, she is spicy, she's golden brown delicious. It is my latest favorite chicken recipe and I cannot wait to share it with you. Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. Today we're making chicken scarpariello, which is an Italian-American, not traditional Italian to my knowledge. And it's an Italian-American recipe that was really made famous by the restaurant Reos in New York City. I have never been, but this recipe is haunting me all over the place and I've been trying it and it really is kind of phenomenal. It's kind of like an Italian spicy yet sweet chicken meets sausage and peppers, but all together. It's phenomenal. I've got the oven preheated to about 400, a little less than 400, but around 400, and we're gonna just get started right into it. I've got a, a shallow, large Dutch oven here, because everything's gonna go into the oven, so we gotta get that prepped and ready to go. I'm using bone-in skin, bone skin on chicken thighs. I am using some sweet sausages. I'm using a sweet bell pepper, shallots, lots of garlic. You're gonna get your spiciness from, these are pickled cherry peppers. They are very, very spicy, very, but they are one of my favorite things on the planet. You haven't lived until you've had an escarole salad with cherry peppers in it. It's just very good. Then you'll need some wine. You'll need a little bit of chicken stock. Um, I've got some dried rosemary, a little uh, fennel seed. I like it. You can omit it if you want to, of course, but I really dig it. Let's get started. Um, if this was a really big bell pepper, I would only use half because I don't want it to be overwhelmingly like peppery, but at the same time, you kind of need all that sweetness. So all I'm gonna do is just slice this into like that, nice and thin, like so, like that. I like a red bell pepper here. Again, you really are trying to nail that sweetness. Um, a lot of people do add a bit of sugar, and I might at the end, depending on how spicy I make it, with how much of the brine from the cherry peppers. I'm also gonna add a dash of vinegar in there, a splash and a dash. Um, but it always kind of varies. You know, that's a great thing about cooking. And I suppose that's the difference between cooking and baking. You've got so much more flexibility when you're cooking rather than baking. Um, it's pretty fantastic. You can use an onion, which most people do, and I have already used that in, when I'm making this recipe. I really love the idea of shallots in here. Let me tell you why. I don't even slice them. I cut them in half. It's almost like, it's another like uh, component rather than just an aromatic, you know? Cut them in half, peel them, leave them like that. They'll start to fall apart, but they will still somewhat keep their shape. I just really like it. You don't have to, you can use an onion. I just always have shallots on hands. And again, I dig it. So all I'm gonna do right now, wait for that oil to get really nice and shimmering and hot because I wanna add my chicken in. But until that happens, I'm just gonna keep Getting my shallots going. Okay, my oil is nice and hot. I'm just fanning out my chicken here because I want to season the skin side really well with some salt. Season it well and some pepper. There we go. Beautiful. I'm just gonna go ahead and place these skin side down in my hot pan. And you're gonna leave them completely undisturbed for like close to 10 minutes. Not that they're in, I'm gonna season the opposite side. And I'm gonna leave them, like I said, undisturbed for like a good seven to 10 minutes. I want that skin to be really brown. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. I'm gonna get my splatter screen. Wow. Look how gorgeous that looks, right? That is perfect. I'm just, it's so beautiful. People take pictures of other kids, but I'm over here taking pictures of my uh, food. This is how I share it to all of you on IG, by the way. Anyway. The second side will not take as long. The second side will probably take like two to three minutes. Let that go. We have everything pretty much ready. Um, once that's a little golden, we'll remove it. That's it. Next step. Take the chicken out. I'm just gonna take some of this fat out of here just cause I don't need all of that fat before I add my sausages because then whatever fat I do render from the sausages, I kinda wanna keep a lot of it. But that is a lot. 
I don't need all that. Okay. Get your zazich in here. And you're just gonna sear these on all sides. Nothing has to be fully cooked through right now. That's what the oven's preheating for. But right now you just wanna sear everything so that they develop good color. Color equals flavor. I put my screen on as though my stove isn't already covered in grease. But you know, it makes me feel better. And also makes it so that I don't splash myself. Just so you know, I get tons of questions about lots of the things that you see me use every day. If you follow me on Instagram, I have a whole highlight that it links you to everything from my screen to this pot, to my knives, to everything. So it's all in the highlight there, the link's down below. Go check it out. All your questions will be answered there. Sausages are out. Veggies go in. Just like that. I'm gonna hit them with just a pinch of salt just to help draw out some of the moisture and help soften them just a tiny bit. And I'm just gonna babysit them until they develop some color and cook down a tiny bit. It just won't take very long. Pan's really hot. Veggies look good. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a pinch of fennel seeds. I like it, but if you don't like fennel seeds, by all means, keep it out. I like it because it kind of echoes the fennel in the sausage. And a little dry rosemary. If you have fresh, use fresh. Can I get this container open? If you have fresh, use fresh, but I'm just gonna use such a small pinch. But again, if you don't like it, leave it out. I know some people don't love rosemary because it can be quite strong. I really like it, so I'm adding it in. Look at the beautiful color on those. Okay, now I'm gonna do something strange, but necessary. I'm gonna just take a little bit of flour. What this does is it kind of helps thicken the sauce. And so you'll get almost like the consistency of gravy versus the consistency of a really thin sauce. I want this to really bubble and be exceptional. So I go ahead and add a tiny bit of flour and it makes a really big difference. So add that in there, stir it to combine, add your wine. The wine is a really big, important key here. I just let it evaporate just a bit, just let it cook out. I scrape the bottom of the pan just to lift all those brown pieces because those have tons of flavor at this point. Let that reduce. Add your stock, which you know I just use water and some bouillon powder. Combine that all together. Let that come to a simmer. And while that happens, we're gonna go ahead and add in some of the cherry peppers. How much you add is totally up to you. I, this is one of my favorite ingredients on the planet, so I add quite a few because I do want this to be nice and spicy. And then I add a little bit of the brine as well. Once that comes to a boil, we're gonna add in the meat and then we're gonna pop this into the oven. Now that it's up to a boil, Try the sauce a little bit, okay? And it is so good, definitely spicy. Sweet from the shallots and from the peppers. I'm actually not going to add any sugar or anything. I'm just gonna keep it that is, as is, but I am gonna just take a little bit of red wine vinegar, about a tablespoon or so. Again, give it a stir, try it, and if you want it a bit more vinegary, by all means, add a bit more. No, that is perfect. Ooh, spicy. Okay, and then just arrange your sausages all around. The important thing here is that the top of the chicken, that beautiful golden brown, crispy skin, does not touch the sauce or it will get soggy. So we just have to be careful to not let it touch the sauce, which that's fine. And now we're gonna pop the entire thing into the oven and let it cook for about, I would say, 20, 25 minutes or so. Gonna nestle the base of the chicken into the sauce. That is perfect. Now I'm gonna pop it in and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Get the chicken juices around. Can you even stand it, okay? Look at that. Look at that sauce, it is thick. Like I said, it's kind of like a gravy at this point. 
the top still crispy that's what i like i've got some fresh parsley because i don't know about you but that is screaming for something green screaming for something fresh and green and absolutely beautiful i just want to show you because i'm not going to mess this up because i am going to bring this to dinner just as is but look you see how the shallots have kind of just They've obviously softened, but they didn't disintegrate. I love that. I love that they just kind of became a part of the sauce. So I'm just, I, I just have to just dive into the sausage. It's my favorite. The chicken is delightful, but the sausage is the star for me. It always is. <laughs> love it. Mm, just like that. It's gonna be hot though. I'm scared. It is spicy. It is slightly tangy. It's sweet. The peppers add, the peppers and the shallots add so much sweetness to the dish. It's kind of unbelievable, but it's a marriage made in food heaven. You have a little bit of everything. It's kind of like cacciatore meets sausage and peppers meets agrodolce. Sublime. Laurie in the kitchen.com for the written recipe. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.